and welcome to another episode of the Influential Nonprofit. I'm your host, Mary Andersh. Now, today is a little bit of a departure for me because I always talk about the feelings and the mindset and all that. Um, but now we're going to talk about money and how you can get some. So yay, because it's a good resource for you and I want to bring good things to you. And I have my dear friend, Michael Slaywin and his sister, Susan Holt today. And they're going to talk to you about the, okay, hold on, the employer retention credit, right? It's actually employee, but employee that's retention close credit. enough there. This is why it's important because this is money that you are eligible for because the kind of the last of the COVID CARES Act and not a lot right. of nonprofits know about this fund. And Michael and Susan work with this. And I said, yes, come and share this with my audience. So welcome to the Influential Nonprofit. Thank, first of all, yeah. thank you, Marianne. We appreciate uh, the opportunity to kind of spread the word. You bet. Uh, to, you know, folks Your that listeners. you work with doing yeah. important yeah. work. Okay, so before we get to that, I always ask one question first, and that sure. question is, um, you can both answer this question. Tell me something that you're proud of that you don't get to brag about that often. I'll go first. <laughs> Susan's like, I got go this. Let's do I, it. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, my three kids. I'm so yeah. proud yeah. of them. They're 21, 24 and 26 so they're young adults and they're living life and doing great and happy where they are and so my husband and I my husband of 29 years we're both very very proud of them so that's awesome and we don't you know brag on that so much but we okay. do bring they bring us lots of joy so that's wonderful okay Michael okay so mine's also family related um so Susan has three kids. My other sister, our other sister has three children. There's a kind of a gap in their ages, but they are so incredibly close. And it's just so cool to see them around each other. And I don't talk about it that much. I don't know, cause it doesn't seem to come up, but they're all different human beings, truly different human beings, but they, they're each other's best friends. So I'm really oh, proud of that. That's awesome. amazing. Yeah. Oh. It truly is. <laughs> All right. Lovely. Thank you. Okay. So let's get into um, this, the ERC. Um, let's just talk about, let's talk about the fund, how much money's in there and, and give them a little more detail about it. Sure. It started, it, it is a payroll tax. So it's money that has been collected from nonprofits as well as businesses. It's about $400 billion available. And Sue, what would you say has been uh, distributed? Maybe 5%? 10%. Yeah. So it's so, up to $400 okay. billion. It's not going to run out. The Department no. of Treasury is going to write the checks until the businesses stop applying for it. And they have up to three years to apply for this money. All right. So what do you do to apply? You go to our portal, you answer some questions, you upload some documents, and uh, that's it. Super you, easy. Uh, yeah, it's super easy. Um, there are, uh, you know, detailed questions that will walk you through. It takes about 10 or 15 minutes if you're on the phone with us because we walk uh, our like, clients through. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so this, so, but this is a credit. So what does that mean? A credit, it's actually, a, it's kind of a misnomer. It's called the employee retention credit, but it actually comes in the form of a check to the nonprofit or the business. So it's cash money in the form of a check. So it's a payroll tax credit. So they've already paid payroll taxes okay. on their employees and it's a payroll tax credit. It's a reward for keeping their employees on right. payroll. We were actually just in a meeting and uh, the business owner of a, a well-known uh, business in St. Louis, he said, it's almost the government's way of not having to pay unemployment because if we laid off people, then we'd have, they'd have to pay unemployment. And it was kind of true, you know, because it's, they're right. being rewarded for keeping their employees on payroll and they've already paid these taxes. The money is on the table, just waiting 
for businesses and nonprofits to apply. This is incredible. Four billion. Four hundred billion. Four hundred billion. Four hundred billion. <laughs> that's like a number. That's a hard number to even understand. For I know. Sure. Yeah. And why are people like connecting? They just don't know about it, or is it new, or both? So, in the beginning, okay, March twentieth, uh, twenty uh, twenty, when COVID kind of started and the COVID Cares Act was enacted there were three programs. I'm gonna talk about two, PPP, which most people know about, right. and ERC. Banks were incentivized to give uh, businesses, and uh, no, oh, no, I'm sorry, only businesses uh, loans, okay? So they got between one and 5% of the total loan as an incentive from the government. So no one was taking ERC and, there, and they didn't, our government does many things right. And one of the things they didn't do right, unfortunately, is publicize the, the availability of this money. And they have also changed the guidelines many times. So originally you could only get PPP or ERC. And then the, because like the PPP and the EIDL and all those letters, that's yeah. all done, right? Like that money yeah. is done. Ran out. Yeah. Over. Ran Programs out. Are it's over. done. Right. right. Again, this money is not going to run out until the last check is written from the Department of Treasury. So, so it'll last as long as it, or is it? Well, it's a three year. So the program is over. Yeah. Gotcha. So, you know, but businesses, nonprofits can have their, re their payroll tax returns amended up to three years after the end of that quarter. Okay, so let's just say I'm a nonprofit and um, I received PPP. Does that mean I can't get this or I can get this? You F, that is one of the changes that the IRS made. And yes, you can now get uh, ERC, even if you got PPP. Well, okay. originally, nonprofits were not a part of right. the program. And right. so in 2021, um, nonprofits were added to the program. So they've expanded it. So now, so that would be another reason why, you know, a nonprofit might say, oh no, we, we, we don't qualify, but they do now They do being a nonprofit. And then we just have to dig a little deeper to see if they had any reduction in services that they offer their um, clients or clients. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you said the application process is pretty simple, but is that something like your accountant could do or is that something, or like you have to be in the know about this? Sue, why, why don't you okay. go ahead with so that? So let, yeah. let me make sure I understand your question. So are you saying for the accountant to help with the questionnaire or do the ERC for them? Or is that, I mean, the question is, um, can't my CPA or accountant apply for this? Got it. Yes, absolutely. They could, but honestly, it's not typically in their lane. CPAs don't generally deal with payroll taxes. They deal with income taxes. So, um, you know, some people, so some CPAs and accountants aren't even aware of this program, you know, or, or a nonprofit might think, oh, it's a tax credit so my cpa is taking care of it when they really haven't mm. so they could do it for um absolutely they could do it but again it's it's really out of our out of their lane and you know some cpas that we've partnered with to help their clients um they they are happy to hand it over it's kind of yeah. like would you you know you could figure out how to change your oil but would you you know, or, or let the professionals. Certainly, I wouldn't do that. No, we do have a funny story about that, but we won't go there. Yeah, yeah, that's, so yeah. clearly, like my husband has to actually try to fix everything first, um, oh. and then, which he can actually fix most things, that's right? Awesome. Yeah, handy. but he's not. He's not typical. Okay, uh, so yeah, you know, let me let me add one thing to this uh, with the CPAs and the accountants and even the bookkeepers. There's two hundred plus pages of IRS guidelines. In order for a CPA or accountant, which, you know, to get out of the lane, read these 200 pages, which I've read several times. Um, I mean, it's, it's a cumbersome process they don't want to deal with. 
and right. evolving because they keep adding right. Right. to it. Right. Exactly. So I would love to share a story of like an organization that you've helped secure this money. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be happy to. So there is a, um, domestic violence organization in St. Louis. They have a couple locations and they had uh, a reduction in services because one, they couldn't let multiple families into their shelters. Mm. So um, mm -hmm. then they had to find hotel rooms for the family. Um, they weren't able to, because because of COVID protocol, the, let's say um, one of their clients, they couldn't come to the shelter and talk. So then they had to try and talk to them. They were in the same room as yeah. the abuser. They couldn't do that. You know, they couldn't, they, they might not have even had the technology to do that. So that reduction in services, and then there's the hotels, which had their own issues with staffing and um employees with cleaning and right. separation that you know so so there and then then they couldn't drive their clients so then they had to get taxis or uber so then the cost was had increased so that they really had to reduce their services that they offered i mean they still ran they're a phenomenal organization and what they do, but they were impacted significantly. Their clients are, and, you know, we were able to help them get over $600,000. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And so what I'm hearing is there was a reduction in services. So maybe they, like, there was reduction in staff, so, and, and, but they still paid, but, but what I'm hearing is, but they're still paying for well, payroll so taxes, payroll, right? Correct. But really the reduction in services. So it falls under, it doesn't have to be um, a complete shutdown. So if it's considered a partial shutdown, if they had to reduce their services or reduce their capacity or their diff there's different qualifications. Um, but in this case, it was more of a reduction in services to their clients. They weren't able to, again, only one family could be in the shelter at a time. They might've had four families that needed this at the same, on the same right. day that were in an emergent situation. Right. So in that situation, you know, that's just one example. That wow. they, right, right. So that is that $600,000 like unrestricted funds, right? They can do whatever yes. they want with the money. That is correct. Whatever the nonprofit, it will be a check written to the nonprofit. They can allocate it however they see fit. Because that's the goal. That's what everybody wants right. is the unrestricted funds, you know? Right. right. And so many of the funds that nonprofits get are tied to certain things and it, and it really harbors their, um, can in their ability to manage the organization. Right. Um, Some of the grants are, you know, have to be earmarked for certain, certain expenses, but this is different. Right. Yeah. So it like, this feels, you know, too good to be true. <laughs> I bet you, do you get that a lot? <laughs> we do. Uh, we yeah. do. And, and I say we're like um, the house on the street when you were a kid and you were trick or treating that you went to for the full size Snicker bars. <laughs> like we feel that's what, right? Or full size Hershey bars, whatever you like. But it, it does sound too good to be true. But it is true. They've paid these payroll. If they've paid payroll taxes, okay. this is a payroll tax credit in the form of a check to the nonprofit. If even if their revenue did not reduce. Right. But if they were impacted, their operations were impacted at all, they, they can qualify. Wow. Um, and then, so like, how do you, so you, is it based on like, I guess you, how much, how many employees you have, how much payroll tax you paid, that's how much you could qualify for? That, that's, yes. 
The short answer is yes, and there's other qualifying factors, but the short answer is really it's the number of employees that you had in 2020 and 2021. Okay, so what are other, what are other factors for qualification? Less than 500 W-2s. Okay. That was another change. It used to be less than 100. Now it's less than 500 full-time. So if they have 500 or 499 full-time and 100 part-time, that's okay. Okay. You know, so 30 hours is considered full-time. Right. So that's, right. that's an, an, you know, that's the first, the first question is, do they have W-2s and we can help one W-2 up to 500. Wow. Okay. And then, um, and then is there like a fee to do this or? Yeah. So there's no fee. There's no obligation, no cost, I should say until the very end where, so the process is, we either help the organization go through the questionnaire with them on Zoom if they're not local. Uh, we do this a lot, go through the questionnaire on Zoom. Then the next step is they upload a few documents. Then ERC specialists, they are the forensic tax and payroll tax experts that are gonna go line by line through their 941s and detailed payroll report to maximize this credit within the law within the IRS guidelines. ERC specialist takes about two weeks with their forensic tax accountants. We have uh, tax lawyers on staff as well, if it's a complicated case. And after that, it goes back to the client and the client signs the documents and it's turned into the IRS. So if the nonprofit has their paperwork in order, which you know most of the nonprofits we talk to do, um, we do the questionnaire. So they send in the documents two weeks later, they get a final number and then when the it goes to the IRS. Yeah, hold on, Sue. Okay, and, and it uh, goes to the IRS and the IRS then um, will issue the check. Now, that's, that's the part where there's a lag and unfortunately we cannot control the IRS. That does take six to eight months. Okay, all right, for the, for the, for the trend, check to yeah. process. But like, how do right. you make, then how do you make money? Part of the fee that is paid on the back end gotcha. from the refund check is how we are paid. Okay. All right. So that makes sense. And um, all right. So um, what if you don't qualify or you've been told you don't qualify? Should they just well, check that, with you anyway? Well, absolutely. Because at the time they may have asked, uh, they may not have qualified because the IRS has changed this so many times and, and will probably continue to change it, they may qualify now. I, perfect example, I went into a business, a small business, a guy I've known for, for 100 years, and um, I said to him, do you know about the ERC, employee retention credit? He's like, well, I don't qualify for anything. My revenue increased. I was like, doesn't matter you still right. qualify. Right. And this is a perfect example where nonprofits actually didn't qualify at first. Right. They weren't a part of the program and now they are. Right. Yes. Right. So, yeah. yeah. It's, All right. So what's the call to action? What should um, the listeners do? They what's should, the first step? The first step is setting up an appointment uh, with, with me going through the questionnaire or they can go to ERC planning dot com and um i believe i sent you the link for my yeah calendar. i've got the links and they'll be in the show notes if P, um so people okay, can great. grab it mm -hmm. yeah um yeah if there's any questions whatsoever i really encourage people just to call um we're happy to talk to folks and clarify anything they have questions on so they get this money i mean truly we look at it as they're owed this money for staying open, uh, even if they were even if they're closed, they can still get the money. But staying open and retaining employees, right, during this crazy time, right. And even like what I'm hearing is, even if your revenue increased or decreased, like let's say like you had 50 people, but now you have 35, but you could still qualify. 
Yes, right. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's up to 26,000 per employee, per W-2 employee. Um, okay. My, my got to love technology. It's great when it works, but I see I'm unstable. <laughs> um, so it's up to 26,000, but we're seeing an average of about 17,000. So we're talking about a significant amount of money. Yeah. Per yeah. employee. Per employee that's on the per table employee. for these nonprofits. It's like, yeah. um, what would you do if you had $17,000 per employee? Like, what would you invest that in? Like right. so many things in, you know, infrastructure, technology, right. um, program, allowing right. me to coach and train you. <laughs> right. right, All those things. You're like, I've That's always wanted to work right. here and now you can. <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. That should be, we should add that in. So right. anyone that benefits <laughs> from our our radio show today roll, roll it in marianne because yeah. you're going to have that extra money to continue to grow even more so all right is there anything else um you want people to know about this you, you know one thing i do want to stress is this is general operating budget money there's no restrictions on what the nonprofit can do with the money so you never get general operating budget money it's always earmarked for something or typically, I should say. Typically, it's restricted, right? Yeah, um, so this is not restricted. Okay, and so you'd fill out this application with you, then about two weeks, you'll get your amount late, right? And then six to eight months later, you'll get a check. Correct. Actually, actually, <laughs> actually <laughs> when you fill checks. out the question- Could be six checks. Gotcha. Well, right, right, right. Um, when you fill out the questionnaire, you will get a pre-qualification estimate of what you will get. Okay. And then once the documents are scrubbed by um, our partner, ERC specialists, then they will get the exact amount that they're going to turn into the IRS as the amount owed to the nonprofit. Okay. So okay. generally what we're seeing, and, and we're, we actually are seeing um, organizations organizations and businesses that we've qualified in January and February, even in March, start to receive their IRS letters. So they're going to mm -hmm. get six letters and then about one to two weeks, they're going to get six checks because it's by right. quarter. Gotcha. So okay. they're really ahead of the game, crossing our fingers. They continue, but we're still saying six to eight months. Okay. All time. right. Yeah, because, you know, it's better to have it earlier than the delays because right. like, okay, the PPP and then like the EIDL and that got, I mean, like I got some of that money. It was so heartbreakingly complicated. <laughs> right. right. I mean, it was beauty. horrible and it right. was like uploading documents and then, oh, they uploading them again. And I'm like, I was like, as God is my witness, I will, I will get this. I like, I was just like yeah. on a, I, I was like, I, 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 you know what I mean? Like I will, you, when you tell me I can't do something, I'm a Capricorn, I'm going in twice as hard. <laughs> and I like, I will see this through. And I know people who didn't get that exactly. money and that application is closed and they right. have stuff floating around. And so they could qualify for this. Oh, for sure. Right. Yeah. This is nowhere near as complicated as PPP. It is so simple. It is such an easy process. We hold their hands. It's right. I mean, ERC specialists, the communication is amazing. And we, as partners with them and partners with our clients, are holding their hands and helping them every step of the way to make sure it is, you know, no hiccups. All right. Yeah. You know what, 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 I'm sorry, Marianne, one last thing. The IRS now is starting to pay interest on the money owed to the nonprofit and to the business um, because it's taking so long to get the money in the hands of the organization that deserves the money. It's so considered now an interest. overpayment. So they're paying right. about 5% interest on top of the overpayment credit. And that is not a part of their no. credit right. as far as ERC specialist eyes. So that's really kind of a bonus extra. So money. it'll Absolutely. serve them to get this money away, get it out. Yeah. Yep. Cause it's costing Absolutely. them now, right? Like, okay. So, um, that's, this is amazing. Um, uh, again, we it's ercplanning.com 
Uh, it's, Correct. And but the links are in the show notes, and the link to your calendar is in the show notes. So if you want to chat, Thank you. Michael's awesome. <laughs> you'll have a lovely conversation and let's see if we get, get you some cash man um, absolutely don't I mean, miss out on this cash yeah we are, you we, you qualify they want to give it away it's, it's a do. win all around right all right this is amazing thank you for sharing this with me um and the and the listeners and i always close with the same question now this has a little more meaning than i typically do because michael and i know each other um, but, uh, if we were at karaoke, which Michael, we most likely <laughs> will be at some point in our life, because, oh my gosh. spoiler alert, Michael's partner is my BFF. So, <laughs> and we, and my BFF and I love karaoke. So most likely we will be at there. So when, let's just say when we're at karaoke together, what would be your go-to song? Oh my, Sweet are you at? Caroline. <laughs> you know, the biggest That's problem is sometimes the artists change the words on me. I just don't know how that happens. <laughs> and, and, and mine would be very appropriately Rocket Man by Elton John. Oh, there we go. Uh, that's a good one. Why is it very you. appropriately? Rocket Man. <laughs> I it's, don't know. I, don't I love know. that. That's an awesome song, and I don't hear that a lot of karaoke, so I like that. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, you know, but one I I do want to be invited next time. Hundred <laughs> okay. percent. I feel like we could work that out. Okay, great. Um, Absolutely. I, you may, Susan, like when my nephew, who's like in his thirties, was little, and I took him to see Bon Jovi. So he was like in second grade or something, and you know, they came to when it was Riverport. It's, and anyway, and he looks at me, he goes, I said, did you like it? He said, yeah, but they sang all the words wrong. <laughs> it's it's shakala heart and you're too late. <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, that I, is I, awesome. I, I understand like, oh, what he's that must, saying. Yeah, that must have been such a bummer. They got the words wrong, Kev. <laughs> Yeah, this was so long ago, but my, yeah, we we're obviously still laugh about that one. Okay, yeah. thank you so much, Michael and Susan, for being here. Thank you for informing our Thank listeners. You. Again, if you, the links are in the show notes. ERCplanning.com. It's real easy. Yeah. Yep. So and um, if you want to stay connected to me, you can just go to the influential nonprofit.com and throw me an email address and I'll send you my up level your influence starter kit and has all kinds of really cool stuff about all the stuff I talk about around communication and leadership and asking for what you want in a way that you'll get it and all those goodies. So um, that's it for me. And I'll see you next time on the influential nonprofit. 